Everybody's out here at the Highland Summit Center event, checking in with 1168A Victory, and a lot of victories today at the end of day one. Congratulations on the great performance so far. I really love Victory's design overall what they have really doing great with the wall stakes and we talk about kind of the different features they have for that especially pay attention to this uh pincher uh area that they have for that it's been working out so well overall a great design for that they played an earlier signature event at mall so we talk about some of their changes and iterations how they've been improving we talk about their autonomous modes and a lot more coming up here on pits and parts this video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following the Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Lewis, let's break down this robot a bit more, starting out with your intake. I'd love to hear more about that. And as you go through, uh, let's talk about some changes from all of you uh, on what you made. Oh, okay. So as you can see, this intake here, um, we use a hood intake here. So it's four stages. Um, it runs at 600 RPM uh, with uh, two smaller wheels in the middle and um, two bigger wheels at the end. And um, we decided to go with the hook intake because um, at Mall we actually had a actually had a hook intake with the with, with like the hook flipping it onto the stake. Sure. And we found some we found some problem with that is that like when it grabs onto the uh, onto the stake and it tries to squat on it. Sometimes the hook will get jammed onto the, like the top, like top part of the stake if it's not like positioned perfectly in our logo clamp, and this caused a lot of problems with like jamming during autonomous and things like that. So um, after Mall of America, we decided to change to a hook intake, which made things a lot more consistent. Because um, with this top part, we found that um, since this wheel can be moved, um, when it grabs onto the stake and it doesn't grab it perfectly, these wheels actually like, if it grabs it like. I guess like if the stake is too far back, these wheels actually move the ring towards the towards the stake so that it can still score on it. If even if we don't grab the stake like perfectly in, in the center of the of the robot. All right, so let's say a ring come in and uh, as does come in as well too. What I gotta ask you from switching to a flex wheel, did you have to change any of your structure at all in order to accomplish that? Um, I guess for structure wise, um, we kept a pretty similar structure. We actually had this um. We actually had this L channel in the, on the hook intake as well, but one thing we did change is like how uh, slanted this bottom curve is. So at Mall of America, we actually like our um, curve was actually like pretty steep, so it had had a lot of trouble picking up rings from off the ground. So with this one, um, you can see it's like it's like a little bit like it's very like we curved it. Um, we found that like spin up like if you like curve it like the something like a something that would shake like this which like it kind of looked like a disc from spin up um it can it can go in perfectly with like a with like a curve compared to like straight pieces so then um we make sure to leave ourselves a lot of space here so that like we can make this as um as um i guess shallow as possible so it's very easy for the bottom stage of the intake to pick up the ring and score it onto this thing and then i'll demonstrate the, the intake working here so then it just goes in like this and then and then it just goes all the way up pretty, pretty, pretty fast. Let's talk about uh, from your wall stake wise. That's something when I watched you guys, I was really impressed with seeing on there. So talk to me about that design and structure and showcase how that works. Okay, so um, you can see uh, our wall stake mech is pretty simple compared to other teams with like redirect and stuff. So the biggest reason uh, why we only grab one ring compared to two is that um, like with people who grab two rings and try to score them on wall stakes, we find that like it takes a lot of time, obviously, to like grab it from the ground and like push two rings into your mechanism. And if you try to score and another team pushes you away and you drop those rings, oh, and you drop those rings, then it, um, then it just, you just wasted a, a lot of your time because you spent a lot of time collecting it from the ground and push, putting it into your stake. So we found that with one ring, you can pick it off the ground very, very quickly so that even if you don't get it on uh, the first time and people shove you off and the ring falls out of the field, um, it's, we can go back again and quickly get another one so that we don't waste as much as our time, which reduces our cycle time during the matches. Very cool. So show, showcase how this uh, claw works for it. Okay. Uh, talk to me a little bit more about it and let's see it actually okay. work. So actually, um, we have the the first stage here actually helps the claw align itself. So um, uh, we would drive forward with the robot and the resistance of the flex wheels would stop the claw, would stop the, would stop the ring right here so that um, so that it, it's, it's centered perfectly right here. And then what we can do 
is we can grab it and we can uh we can raise it up like this oh we're kind of low on air right now um and then once it's all the way up we we, we can all we have to do is drive forward into it and this bar here which would turn the ring slowly like this so that it it's scored onto the wall stick so Very cool. Oh, by the way, I love just uh, you can tell how low your CG is. Well, yeah, thank too. you. I mean, you're so stable as yeah, thank you. It's great. Thank you. Yeah. And oh, one more thing. Uh, with with pistons, we found that it was a lot quicker uh, compared to like motors because um, with motors you have to use a very low RPM, uh, meaning that it takes like two or three seconds for the arm to raise all the way up. So that um, when when it actually does raise up, like you you just waste a lot of your time just waiting for the arm to go all the way up. So then with pistons, it it goes up in less than a second, and since we don't want to require pulling, actually pulling the arm back down like other teams, we can just keep it up and use a single acting piston so that it saves uh, more air for our other functions. So I'm gonna ask you off your robot here too, is you got this nice cooling system oh, yeah. for it as well. Talk to me more about that. Okay, so um, I think this is very something very unique to our team. So we actually use uh, six PC fans here, so, and we mounted them using like various screws and zip ties to this little like table we made with uh, Vex parts. And this is very, very helpful um, because like we can just quickly plop the robot on here after a match, especially during uh, 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 eliminations. We can just have it right next to the uh, to the queuing area so that it can, it cools it down in about like two to three minutes. So we will be ready for match. So like if, especially during finals, like if we are, uh, if we're overheated after like the, the first match, we can quickly cool it down with this compared to like, um, we tested like the, the dust spray which like sort of um we didn't like because we didn't exactly know like like how much we need to spray like how much how much you put it down and this is just makes it consistent um we don't have to worry about our robot overheating and and yeah this just makes our matches more consistent i'm gonna pass over to brian here and talk more about your uh, drive train as well too so i'd love to hear more about the configuration anything else you want to cover also uh we use 400 480 uh rpm drive train and Four, four motor in the bottom and two in the top. Uh, 这样子它可以 help 我们去做 skills and uh, the drive 去更好的去 score wall, uh, wall sticks and uh, 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 motor go, motor go. Okay, so what Brian said was that um, we chose a faster drive drive train than our first robot, which was 450 instead of 480 on the same size of the wheels. Is that um, we found that with 480, it's actually like just enough speed so that during uh, during um, skills and matches, we can quickly like rush towards goals, which is essential to our strategy uh, when we have to pick up a third goal instead of just going for two. Brian, yeah. do you forecast your drivetrain changing at all uh, throughout the first season, or are you pretty happy with what you have? I don't think we can ch uh, we change this mo uh, motor because we use like at the last uh, competition we used six motor at the bottom. That, but they don't have like space to use the other uh, damage wheels, so we changed uh, four, four motor in the uh, bottom and one to the top, and it saves space to use the uh, damage wheels. Let's pass over to Weihao to talk about Eurodometry since you're mentioning that as well too. Love to hear more about. Uh, obviously, we see the two pods there, but I'd love to hear more about the implementation and maybe talk a little about your autonomous modes and what you're doing. Uh, yeah, of course. So uh, I'm going to talk about the damage parts first. We use um, theron boards. Um, we use cut cut it down boards to uh, find the shape that we want, and then uh, we made two of them, and we use screws to uh, lock them together. We use screws because we didn't use spacers because the um, this wheel would um, touch the spacers, which will block it from moving. Uh, we also added a rotation sensor to. Uh, help us measure where we want our robot to go. Um, I'll, I'll add on to that. So uh, what these does is they actually track the X and Y position of our drivetrain here. So that this um, this one tracks the, this one, uh, these two track the X, Y positions with the rotation sensors individually so that we don't have to rely on our drivetrain encoders um, so that we don't have to deal with like slop, which is that, which means that like, which is like the slippage in gears. Mm -hmm. You can see like if, if I move this drivetrain a little bit, it actually like, moves around a little bit before the motors actually engage which can make which can build up error and make our uh, autonomous inconsistent uh wait i want to ask you um from an autonomous strategy standpoint can you maybe break down like what is your most common autonomous strategy you're running right now uh our most common um autonomous strategy right now is we will go for the mobile goal that is uh, closest to us 
and then we will uh, head for the a ring that's nearest to the four rings stacked on there. After we collect the colored ring that we need, we will go uh, head to the four rings stacked in between the autonomous line. Uh, when we have collected um, the two rings on there, we will go to the ladder and our zip tie will touch the, partially touch the ladder, giving us uh, four, uh, po four points and also a uh, ladder. Well, Victory, thank you so much for taking time to talk about that. Of course, looking for a big victory tomorrow, so can't wait to see how you do as we're recording this. You had a great day one, so good luck the rest of the week. Congratulations on a great robot, and really appreciate you taking time. Thanks a lot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.